Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal. Another one on Douglas Lewis, deadline day, just six hours to go in the transfer window. We made an offer for Douglas Lewis earlier today of 20 million. Aston Villa rejected it, but we are in with the second bid right away. Aston Villa are playing hardball. They, they Apparently they don't want to sell him. I'm very sure they do want to sell him, but they just want more money for him. Obviously, um, it's not going to be easy to pick up someone from any team on deadline day. It's obviously going to be hard every time. So they're basically trying to lure us to paying maybe even 30 to 40 million. They, they're not, they did not accept the 20 million, but we have made a second offer. And uh, let's see how it goes. Um, so here is the news from um, the last few minutes. So according to David Onstein, Arsenal going back in with a second offer for Aston Villa midfielder Douglas Luiz. Opening Arsenal approach for Brazil International was unsuccessful. So Aston Villa rejected the 20 million, but they aren't giving up. Aston Villa insists the 24-year-old will not be leaving player believed to be keen on the move. So basically, the player wants to move from Aston Villa. He wants to join Arsenal. Um, Aston Villa already signed a replacement for him, but Aston Villa are not um, going to accept 20 million because they want more money. They know Arsenal need a midfielder. They know it's a few hours remaining, so they're trying to make us pay even more cash. So uh, as uh, Jack says as well, Pat, David Onstein, Arsenal have returned with a second bid for Aston Villa's Douglas Luiz. Told the bid is 23 million. So we tried 20 million early on today. They refused. We've now gone in with a bid of 23 million. First offer rejected, and we could go as high as 25 million as reported earlier. So you'd remember Aston Villa a few years ago, like two years ago after we gave them the goalkeeper, Emmy Martinez, they tried to sign Smith Rowe and we refused. Uh, we refused their offer for Smith Rowe. And obviously yesterday we did beat them. So I'm guessing they're doubling or tripling our tax because um, of those two events, beating them yesterday and obviously um, refusing to sell them Smith Rowe a couple of um, seasons ago. So they're making it hard for us to get um, Douglas Lewis, even though if they don't want him. He was literally on the bench the last game. They've been putting him on the bench the last um, few weeks. Uh, more reports on Douglas Lewis. According to Sami, Arsenal working on a second offer for Douglas Lewis after original 20 million bid was turned down by Aston Villa. Sources indicate it will be worth in the region of 23 million. Villa determined to um, keep Lewis. I'm still not very sure they want to keep Lewis that much because they have already signed um, a replacement the last few hours as well in Dendonka. And if Douglas Lewis wasn't playing for them yesterday and they've signed another midfield on top of that, that means he's definitely going to be on the bench for the rest of the season. The World Cup is coming up and he wants to play. Arsenal have more competitions to offer, more chances for him to play. And as Sami also goes on to say, pretty clear that Luis wants to move. Um, Arsenal wouldn't go to this lens if they weren't sure about that. If or when Villa accept the fee, the deal will move as quickly as possible. Personal terms won't be um, a problem. So... As, as we've been told, Douglas Lewis definitely wants to move. He's asked to join Arsenal. Personal terms have already been agreed with Arsenal. So everything in terms of contract, um, length of contract, how much you're going to be paying him a week, everything is going to be very easy. So the moment Aston Villa say, yes, you can move to Arsenal, the rest will basically just be the medical and it's done. But um, as of now, they're being very, very stingy. And also Sami goes on to say that... Um, Arsenal wouldn't really go to this lens if we aren't sure about him uh, moving. So Arsenal wouldn't really focus on Douglas Luiz for the last few hours if um, they knew Douglas Luiz wouldn't come here. That would be very risky because what happens if you go for him throughout this um, day and then they say no and then time is over, you can't sign anyone else. So Arsenal know that he wants to move and that is why we are going in for him. So we had a 20 million bid for him rejected. We've gone in for 23 million. I have a feeling that will be rejected as well and we'll have to pay like 25, 26 million for him unless they just decide to be like, you know what, let's just sell him. So that's the latest on Douglas Luiz. They are playing hardball. They want us to pay a lot of money for him. So it's going to be hard. That, that, that's the issue with them. A lot of every single team buys players on the final day. Until today, I've never understood why player, why, why teams wait for the deadline day to sign players. Um, but everyone does that. Uh, it makes it harder because right now, if they say no, then you have to start looking for another player. Uh, that one has gone quiet. Like, Does that get it done, please, says Paul? I've lost confidence, Glenn, says Cookie. We made this mistake with Vlahovic in January. We can't just focus on one man. We need to speak to an alternative if talks aren't proceeding. Um, again, we don't know about that. Maybe they are speaking to someone else that we don't know about. Um, I, I'm, we are not going to finish today without signing a player. I am 100% sure. 
um, make it uh, make it um, done, please, is Khalid. Um, we've made an offer of 23 million, but we'll make we'll make an offer of 25. Rough. Um, let them get you with Tillemans. Tillemans will have to pay 40, and even then, we can go for 40 right now. And they say, you know what? We've changed our mind. We want 60. Then what happens after that? Uh, Santa says, seriously, Arsenal is the most unserious club in the world. Says Alma. Uh, make it quick, says Bassett. Um, get this. Uh, or what we are waiting for? We are waiting for Aston Villa to accept the bid. That is what we are waiting for. Anya says, get this deal done. Welcome to Arsenal. Um, not yet. Um, 25 would be good. I, I'm still, I'm still very, I'm very unconvinced that they'll accept 25. You know, it's the final day. That's their player. They can easily say we're not going to sell unless you give us 35. And then it's it's trouble after that. But, but and although the good thing is that the player doesn't want to be there and we are told that the player wants to move and is actually pushing Aston Villa to let him go. So that's a good thing. If a player doesn't really is not really sure about um, moving anyway, then they wouldn't really um, bother at all. So it's good that he actually wants to move and Aston Villa will be keeping an unhappy player if they decide to keep him. Um, time isn't on our side, says Hillary. We have less than five hours. Um, I expect... Um, Tillemans to play for Leicester. Why are not? Why are we not signing Tillemans? Money, 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 money to us. Uh, Leicester want forty million, and Arsenal do not want to pay that forty million because Tillemans has one year remaining on his contract. That is why we are not going for Tillemans. That is um, the reason. Unless in the next few hours they change their mind and they ask for a little less money than that. Um, Simon says, what a deal this could be. I can't wait to see Douglas um, in an Arsenal FC shirt. I'm still confident that deal will happen anyway. Um, let's see. Um, that, that, that one, he's, not, he's not going to be moving from Napoli, Milinkovic Savic. And if you go for Milinkovic Savic today, you're going to pay 100 million. They were asking for 70 million in June. Right now, they're going to ask for 100 million. So Savic is a. Um, that's an impossible deal. Tillemans is still possible. Savage is an impossible deal to do. Um, get it done. Arsenal says, Kevin, I still think they will get done. Alex says, hope we fancy our chances at Tillemans next year is free. Um, that's the other thing. So Arsenal have been looking at Tillemans. And uh, right now, they want $40 million, um, for Tillemans, um, the, the, his team, Leicester. And next year, he'll be moving on a free. So Arsenal are looking at it like Tillemans has refused to sign a new contract at um, Leicester. We rather just wait for January and take him then for less money or wait for January and sign him so that he can join us at the end of the season for free. There is that as well. So for us, obviously, we want all these players. I want Tillemans right now. I want Neto right now. But for them, they look at this as a business as well. They can't just go and pay 50 million, then pay 60 million tomorrow, then pay 70 million for another player. They, I'm guessing there's a lot of things they look at there. For us fans, we just want anyone to join anytime, any money. But for them, I don't think they look at it like that. They look at um, which or which uh, which deals are worth it more? Um, let's see. No, no update on um, Modric at all. Abiola, not, I've not had anything about Modric today. And let them need uh, please, um, please ask. So we don't have time anymore. I do want to should try their best and sign the wingers and midfielders. I really don't think we are going to sign a wing unless it's a surprise. I think we are going to midfielders right now. Arsenal still have money in their account. Um, it's crazy. I, I do believe so as well. Like we we tried to pay fifty million for Rafinha, we Rafinha didn't come to us, so, so that fifty million is still there. So I, I don't know where that fifty million went, um, unless uh, there are cooking deals that we don't know about. Because we tried to sign those players early on in the transfer window, and they got rejected. And we were talking about a hundred million. We were talking about signing Osimhen and Milinkovic Savic for sixty seventy. Arsenal are not doing enough, says Judex. Um, we hope the deal will be done, says Danzotto. Um, let them lose this man. Let them let them let him go. I, I I don't know why teams. It's only Arsenal actually that usually lets players go so easily. Like even today, we've cancelled another contract. Like I don't know why it's always so hard to do business with other teams. But every time with Arsenal, the last ten years, you want Ramsey, fine, he's going to go on a free. Barcelona want Aubameyang, fine, let him go. Lacazette, free, gone. Ozil, free, gone. Sanchez, Man United want him. The next day is gone. Like, why is it that when players are leaving Arsenal, it's always very quick and we don't even get any money for them at all? We don't even get one million for them, but they move so quickly. But when us, we are trying to get players, it becomes a journey. Edu, please get this player done for us. I think he will. He is Brazilian. He has worked with that before at Man City. So everything is... um. 
everything is pointing out to be done um, either way. I think we'll pay the money, whichever they ask for. Tillyman's will, will, will be needed, says Oloyede. Uh, sorry, I prefer Tillyman's for that amount. Um, they want 40, 40 million, so it, it's it's way more expensive than Douglas Louise. What time the transfer close in the next um, five hours? Five yeah, for less than for less than five hours. Yeah. Around five hours. Mohammed says Arsenal should be serious today. Please, says Mohammed. Uh, we must go out hard for Tillemans. I could surely see that the speculation playing out hard on it, on his head. He really wants some. I, I wonder how he feels, by the way. Like throughout the transfer window, he's been told about Arsenal, Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool. You're not going to stay at Leicester. He's not signing a new contract. Arsenal want you. Arsenal have not made a bid yet for you. Like it must be crazy for him. I actually saw Ben Jacobs right now saying Ben Jacobs, the guy who has been talking about Tillemans. He actually just um talked on a podcast and said Tillemans himself right now, he doesn't even know where he's going to be um tomorrow. He doesn't know which team he doesn't know if he's going to still be at Leicester. He doesn't know where there's going to be making the move. So he might still leave Leicester, so that's another thing. Come on, Aston Villa. We, uh, come on, Aston Villa. We are sorry, bitch. Yesterday, yeah, that is why they're adding the price. They're 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 fed up about their mess. Um, they're mad. Sorry, mad about us beating them yesterday and not giving them Smith Rowe two years ago. And we've given them so many players. Why are they even refusing? We gave them our goalkeeper Martinez. We gave them Chambers whenever they needed a defender. Like the last few years alone, we've given them so many players. They've never even given us anyone and they refuse. They're being stingy with this one. Now, Chamba says, come on, you Gunners. Um, Tillemans is too expensive. Listen, if Tillemans is, um, if Tillemans had, is like the, if he removes the contract from the negotiation, uh, from the situation, I personally think Tillemans is worth 40 or 50 million. But since his, um, his um, contract is, has only one year remaining, it makes it hard. It, it would be crazy to pay that kind of money. Like basically, they want us to pay for Tillemans the same money we paid for Jesus. Basically, that's that is what they want us to do. Um, please get the deal done. Following says um, following. Uh, what about um, Tillemans? Is that not going to show up? Uh, we still have to wait on that one. Uh, Arsenal don't always like to pay money for a good player. Says Darlington. That could be true. That could be true. Over the years, we've never really been that team of us splashing 100 million, 90 million. I guess that is just not Arsenal. I know many people want Arsenal to be like Chelsea because. Chelsea for Fana, 70 million, Lukaku, 100 million, like they pay whichever money that um, they, they want. But um, yeah, I guess uh, that is not just Arsenal. And the, the last time we did that for a player, Pepe, 72 million, disaster. So I, I'm not sure they want to do that again to pay 80, 90 million for a player. And then it um, becomes a disaster. Uh, we need him, says Onyeka. Uh, and also that's the fact that we need a midfielder and his age as well. I still think we're going to get Douglas Lewis today. Um, Alex says now completed about uh, Luis. Not yet. I think um, talks are proceeding well on Danilo. I still know nothing about him except playing in midfield. But still, Luis and Danilo um, do sign for 45 million and Tillemans next day is very good. Again, Palmeiras sell, selling a player today for 20 million. I will not. I will. I don't think that will happen. The only way we can get that deal done is alone. I don't know if getting Luis on a loan deal is possible as well. I don't know if Aston Villa would accept that. But I want him signed. I want him to be an Arsenal player. We don't have much time, says Paul. Um, get it done, Super Edu, says Michael. Um, it will get done, says Johnson. Yes, I like the positivity. Um, time is running out. Of, obviously, they do know the time is running out, Chamba. I'm very sure at 10, they do know the time is running out. And they know that we have um, injuries. So it would be crazy if they didn't um, sign a midfielder. I know they, they do know that um, the time is going. I'll go for Milinkovic Savic. We can never get Milinkovic Savic. Milinkovic Savic will stay at his team. Milinkovic Savic, his name is so hard to say. He will stay at his team. That money is crazy. They will ask for 90 million right now. Um, need a backup for right midfield as well. Can't trust Nelson and Marquinhos to fill in the quality. So I think Nelson would actually have been sold or loaned out if he didn't have the injury. Marquinhos will still have to um, wait. I usually don't like uh, when people say um, I don't trust or I don't like a player who we've never really seen play. So I can't really say I don't trust Marquinhos. We've never really seen him play. So we have to wait for that and for Fabio Vera and those guys as well. I can tell you I didn't really trust Mustafi because we watched him play for seven years. That one, uh, we can say we didn't really trust him. 
Uh, Louise, welcome to Arsenal. Um, not yet. Uh, Jay says, I don't think this deal is going to happen since um, his final day and Jared can't accept the bid. Um, they, they will definitely add the man, but they've signed a replacement. He was on the bench yesterday. They aren't even going to use him. So it's, it's up to them, yes, to sell him or not. But there's also that risk if they don't sell him right now, they will lose him on a free next sum summer. So if, it, if they don't sell him right now, he will go on a free next summer and they won't, they'll get zero. They won't get that 25 million. Hustle is killing my spirit on the transfer market, says um, Kamara. Uh, my, why are you doing? Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully, trophy is ours. That would be great. I can't, like the day we win a trophy and you come here celebrating a Premier League trophy, that would just be crazy. Um, my netted by Anthony for 80 million. Newcastle sign Isaac for record club. Arsenal cannot sign a player for 30 to 40 million. I mean, we've made, um, again, as I said, um, just because my netted are signing players for 200 million doesn't necessarily mean you also have to spend 100 million um, to um, counter that. I, I do agree with buying players that fit in the the project, the process, whatever you want to call it. I would still have gone for Tillemans. Yes, I still think we need midfielders. I still think we needed a backup striker, but I wouldn't compare really. Um, if you ask me right now, Isaac for 70 million and Jesus for 40 million, which one is a better deal? I think Jesus for 40 million is better than signing Isaac for 70 million. Is that true or false? It is true. I'd rather sign Jesus for 40 million than Isaac for 70 million. There's a lot of positives about signing Jesus, Premier League experience, all that. Just because Isaac scored a goal yesterday doesn't necessarily mean he's going to score 30 goals. Remember that. Um, Anthony for 80 million. Again, my United, I don't trust my United in transfers. That has happened a lot of times. They signed Di Maria for 60 did not work. They signed Lukaku for 70, 80, did not work. They signed Pogba for 80, he's gone. They signed Falcao, he's gone. They signed Ibrahimovic one year, gone. So my United have signed a lot of those players for that kind of money and uh, it's never really worked out. So there is, there's usually that risk as well. Um, worst case scenario, Fabio can cover on the wing. Ideally, would want a wing as well, but midfield priority for me. Um, what is the latest transfer news? I have done that getting um, i'm going to talk about the other player who's going to leave us no um Mba. we need tillimans again we've needed tillimans for like the last four months we need to sign a midfielder today at all costs says abdul if you can pay 40 for vera then why can't we pay 40 for tillimans or louise simple uh fabio vera contract um for contract issues louise and tillimans have one year remaining on their contract whatever you're going to pay for a player who has five years remaining if saka signs a five-year contract right now you're going to have to pay 200 million for him. But if he doesn't sign a contract and he goes into his last term um, campaign, teams can get Saka for 30, 40 million. It's just the contract situation. Whatever you pay for a player who has one year remaining is different from what you pay for a player who has five years remaining. That is why we always celebrate when a player signs a new deal because we know he's going to be here and whichever team tries to get him in, it's going to be hard to, for them to get him in because he has a long time to um, remaining on the contract. Like, for example, Chelsea right now, they've given... For Fana, a seven-year deal, seven-year contract is going to be impossible for any team to get for Fana from Chelsea right now. Especially if he plays well, it would be impossible. So that is why, that is why um, Odua, because Fabio Vieira had a, a longer contract remaining over there. Uh, we really need to sign up the wingers in the midfielders to avoid future injuries. Says uh, Monday. Uh, Nelson, we need that man, Luis, because our midfield is not okay at all. I definitely agree with that. I pray Arsenal should get this one done because midfield has a problem because of injury issues. Um, Olayinka was sold today. Yeah, we've gotten rid of a lot of youngsters and nearly like this season right now. You, you, you probably know maybe 10 players who have left Arsenal, but there's like 30 players who've left. Many, many players have left Arsenal, and um, most of them we are not really going to miss them because uh, they aren't really part. Uh, they're not really helping or benefiting us at all. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not really keen about them. Most of those players leaving. Uh, please get Douglas Lewis and says humble. Uh, management should stop that habit of mentioning and they don't buy. Um, Ronnie, um, I have a question though. Um, there's no one who's ever told us that it's the management that is mentioning. It's usually the journalists that are mentioning. You will never hear um, a Teta or um, doing the press conference saying, yes, yes, we do want Tillemans. Yes, we are trying to sign Tillemans. There's no manager who's ever said that. It is usually the journalists and the fans. So whenever you hear Arsenal want Ossiman, it is never a Teta or a Dua said it. It's usually the fans or the or the or some leaks somewhere. It's never the manager or the or the board or whatever. You never hear that um, being done. So about Ossiman, about Milinkovic Savic, we've never really heard it from Arteta and they do. It's the fans and the journalists who are talking about it. So... 
um just up the beat 30 million um party always um is injured that's the problem we cannot go into the rest of the season with party injured that would be crazy um saka is very tired please let them try and sign another winger to help him out there is like there's 700 of you watching on youtube or facebook i really wish i could we could be celebrating a transfer right now um let me tell you about the other transfer the other player that has gone from arsenal so Bellarine has finally left um according to reports from uh, fabrizio romano hector Bellarine to barcelona here we go been told it's all agreed one year contract with no option for a further season Bellarine will sign until june 2023 medical scheduled contract will be terminated by mutual consent with arsenal just see how easy it is to get players out of arsenal Bellarine, we're not even getting one million for Bellarine. he's going for free just like leech steiner just like mikaterian just like ozil all these players went for free like no we didn't get any kind of money for them so Bellerin. He's gone to Barcelona permanent contract. He's been at Arsenal for eight years. He's been part of the four FA Cup wins. So great. Um, ho ho wishing him the best over there. But uh, let's be honest. Uh, Bellerin started his Arsenal career very, very well. But from there, it has never really, he's never really lived up to expectations. So um, will you really miss Bellerin? I don't think your answer will be yes. So Bellarine is gone. I appreciate him being loyal to Arsenal for eight years. I uh, remember 2014, 2015, 2016, he was really, really good. But from there, he really dropped off. So I don't really know who... Um, I know the injury really affected him. Um, I'm, I'm gutted that you didn't get any kind of money for him like literally no team was willing to pay any money for him and that is a problem we've had to face the last seven years we've literally had players that no one wants to pay money for mustafi kolasinac litsteiner socrates all these guys luckily the team that we are building right now i don't think you're going to get any of these players for less than 50 million odegaard martinelli um saka smith all these guys gabriel right now these players are 80 90 100 million but the players that we've had over the years we've really suffered and that is another reason why they're saying arsenal have um, always had um chaos in terms of having money in the transfer window a problem with money because literally we do not sell any players any player that leaves arsenal lives on a free uh, Maitland Niles is about to leave Arsenal. He's going to go out on loan. We are not going to get any kind of money for him at all. He's going to leave Arsenal for basically nothing. So that is just um, crazy. Pepe, no one wants to buy him. He had to go out on loan. Another problem. Remember Lacazette? We didn't get anything for him. Contract ended. He went. We didn't get any money for him. So it's it's a problem that we've had for so many years. And that is why we, can, we can't really... Um, spend 90 100 million like chelsea right now if they sell hudson or doy they would get 40 million if they sold Breuer, the striker they would get 60 million like i'm not sure why these other teams are able to get that kind of money um i appreciate arsenal not um allowing other teams to bully us because we've been bullied a lot in the transfer window so that is why i'm not um really um i don't complain about when Arsenal, uh, when a team asks for 60 million from us and we say no, I'm usually not like, uh, why didn't we pay that 60 million? No, I rather us not pay because we've been bullied for so many years in the transfer market. I remember Juventus. Juventus took Ramsey away from us for free. And then one year later, they wanted to sell him to us for 30 million disrespectful absolutely disrespectful but Bellerin is off to barcelona all the best to him i wish him all the best um but for me i won't i won't miss him at all unfortunately all the best to him right right now from now on so Bellerin is gone we're expecting a lot of players to move on today as well uh we are waiting for douglas Luis's penny um let's see um we definitely need tillemans is the best uh, for me that would have been the first player i would have signed like i would have signed tillemans before gabriel jesus you know like that would have been the first player i signed that that's what those first player wanted at arsenal this guy and unfortunately i don't know why it's being so hard but again i'm always asking myself as well why is it um that tillemans is still at leicester like why haven't we had liverpool are taking him or my net are taking him why is he still at least? I was even really asking myself, like, does he have an injury that you don't know about? Is he not worth it? Because whenever a player is 100% amazing, it's not Arsenal only that is going to be wanting. You will would have been hearing about other teams. So I'm always asking myself, why is it that it's only Arsenal and, and um, Tillemans? Why didn't my United go for him or any of those teams? Um, because of the money, I guess. He has one year remaining on his contract and teams do not want to pay uh, money for him. Uh, time is not in our favor, says Mohammed. Um, any player who forces his move is not always a good uh, at the end. 
you could say that you could say that um any team or uh, any player who wants to move away from their team uh, probably will not uh, will want to do the same against you again in the next couple of years but i don't know it, it could turn out being nice like obameyang at arsenal for the first three years he was really really good and he wanted to move um, from dortmund he had a lot of problems there so um i guess right now he's joining chelsea so maybe you can say that as well douglas Luiz is coming home i'm very confident in that as well i hope Arsenal is not trying to play the intelligence <laughs> says noble i don't think so we've started the season very very well I know they have to get someone. They, they're, they're not that stupid, surely. They cannot do it two transfers in a row. Like in January, the reason why I didn't get top four is because we didn't have enough players. They cannot do it again. Um, we are far, we are far, we are far from Douglas Tillemans, Daniel, and Modric. So this means we will um end up signing no one. And says Jay, um, they should go for Circle for Fana of um Fofana has just signed a new contract yesterday night. He's not going to be leaving um, Lens at all. He signed a new contract yesterday night, so he's, he's going to be staying at um, Lens. Um, why else will leave it late, um, Christopher? Uh, we need a midfielder, so let's be serious. Um, I even wish we should get two solid midfielders, not only Douglas. That is what I want as well. I don't even want a wing. I want two midfielders. Um, surely we should get Tillemans over the line. Surely they would offer a little money like 25, 30 million, then sell him for free. We should get Tillemans over the line. They, they want 40 million. They're not going to take anything less than 40 million. Um, Chelsea are crazy the way they are doing their deals. Uh, we need to be more serious uh, with our deals. I mean, Chelsea have always been that kind of team since 2005, and it's only Chelsea and Real Madrid who always do that. But then again, you have to look at, um, yes, they do win Champions League titles a couple of times, but how many of those players that Chelsea have signed over the last few years um, has it worked out? They did the same with Lukaku, 100 million last year. And um, Chelsea can afford um, to get a player for 100 million right now, and then if it doesn't work out, they can sell him in January. Um, if us if Arsenal we do that, if we do that with a player, if we sign a player right now for 100 million and then we sell him in January, we won't sign a player for two years. Don't ask me why, but Chelsea can actually do that. They've done that before. But for us, if we do that, it's crazy. I actually think that deal for Pepe is still affecting us until today, like signing Pepe for 72 million and not care. I guess their owners. That's the way we start talking about owners as well. Like Chelsea owners are ready to give one billion for transfers, but our owners do not really do that with them. Um, the money so that's where we start talking about cranky again Arsenal is a big club but they don't behave like a big club in terms of buying players you have more money than chelsea buy quality players like um your mates again just as i said samson abramovich and um, um mr tad bali as they call him at chelsea they are willing to spend that kind of money the owners we have we are never going to spend 200 million on a player. We have different owners from Chelsea. So that is why over the last few years, Arsenal fans have been saying Kroenke out because we want to compete and sign these kind of players. Uh, but I, I personally don't think we've been given that kind of money to sign players for 100 million. That has never happened. And it's been there for years. We've never really signed any player for 100 million. Uh, we wait for the best guys. Um, we have to work fast now. No time left. Uh, buy smart, not expensive. Thank you, David. That definitely makes sense. Um, again, just as I said in the last stream, just because um, if I have a car and my neighbor has a car, just because my neighbor has gone out and bought a Ferrari for an extra $10 million, I don't have to do the same. As long as my car works, I can just keep on using my car. So we can't really do whatever Chelsea and MyNetted are doing. Um, my netted have done the same over the last 10 years, but we've won more trophies than them. Also remember that as well. Um, for Fana is the perfect replacement. For Fana has signed a new contract. Let us forget about that. If a play is not good for once, and we should not be thinking everything remains the same. Um, Sandy says that means Arsenal wouldn't sign any any player we didn't have injuries. Uh, so Sandy says if we didn't have injuries, maybe Arsenal wouldn't even have signed a player. Arsenal don't like to spend any Spain. Um, says Tunde. Je Jesus is far better than Isaac. Exactly. It's um, just as David said, smart, not expensive. Um, yes, William has also moved to Fulham. I am glad we've already played them because I know what happens with Arsenal. I'm pretty sure Aubameyang is going to score against us when he faced Chelsea. And if we played Fulham, he, this guy would find a way to score two goals against us. And then what would we say if William played against us and scored two goals? What can we say? You just um, hide yourself for the next two months. We don't need frustration this time around. We have to be in the top four. We are even competing to win the Premier League. So it's 4B. Um, we should be spending big to compete pit with top teams not one year contract players who are going for cheap says um kamara um 
was the second bid of 25 million rejected 23 million i've not seen it yet i am not heard anything about that you're still waiting for an answer it was 23 million actually bible oh um how many players Arsenal is going to buy today i'm still thinking one play and another loan deal that is what i'm thinking it's definitely not going to be three or four players that is not going to happen um if Arsenal pull that off we take everything that has been said in this stream back i'm sure we are going to sign a player before the window closes yes Bash, i agree with that uh he's a good player douglas Luiz. um interesting transfer upon all the rumors among these plenty players it has ended up with douglas Luiz, who has never come near the rumors yeah no i never heard about douglas Luiz before in terms of arsenal but we did we did actually want him in january when he had that problem with the um, midfielders we actually did want him uh, but you didn't get anyone in January. So we've gone back for him. I think that corner that he scored against us yesterday, we were like, no, no, no. We have to get him in. Um, I think I need two players this night, says Aquare. Please, really, we need to sign two more players in order to avoid um, future injuries. Um, let's see. Thank you for all the comments. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Nelly. Um, thank you, Ahmed. Two midfielders, says George. Why Arsenal make hey while well, the sun shine by the way and uh, douglas better than you tillimans that is arsenal fan bound to play with all his heart he's more expensive man that's why like, that's why i said for us fans we just want anyone but for them they do it as a business they don't they don't just sign anyone for 400 million or anything how much is douglas Luiz bid we bid 20 million it was rejected we now bid um let me just go through it again because a lot of you have joined since so david onstein reported arsenal are going back with the second bid for aston villa midfielder douglas Luiz. the first offer was um unsuccessful but they aren't giving up aston villa insistent four year old will not be leaving but the player wants to move and then uh, from this one, as per David Onstein, Arsenal have returned with the second bid. The total uh, bid is 23 million. The first offer rejected, and they could go as high as 25 million, as reported earlier. Um, from um, Sami, say, Sami says Arsenal working on second offer for Douglas Lewis after original 20 million bid was turned down. Sources indicate it will be worth around 23 million. And then Sami says something that I definitely agree with. Pretty clear that Louise wants the move. Arsenal wouldn't go to this lens if they weren't sure about that. If and or when Villa accept a fee, the deal will move quickly. Personal terms won't be a problem. So we've already agreed that um, totally personal terms, um, how much you're going to pay him per week and all that. But it's now up to Aston Villa to accept. Aston Villa obviously playing hard because we beat them yesterday and he refused to give them speed through a couple of years ago. And they're not doing well in the Premier League. So I know it, it kind of feels crazy for them to sell players right now. Um, the midfield is an issue, but I also suggest we need an attacker. I don't think we're going to get an attacker. And I think we need a midfielder. We are, we, we are okay in attack. We've scored 13 goals this season and we are creating a lot of chances. The moment we start scoring those chances, which we will, I know Saka will start scoring goals, Jesus will score more. We'll be scoring four or five per game. I don't have, yesterday we had more than 20 shots. So I don't think creativity is our problem or attack. I think Jesus is great, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli. But midfield, though, we cannot. Lokonga played well yesterday, but we cannot depend on him every single game. Next is Man United, and then you start facing Liverpool, all those guys in October. So it becomes tougher. Europa League is there. We are going to play against the likes of PSV. Um, let's see. I love Tillemans for Arsenal, says Emmanuel. Um, I'm sure we're going to have another update very, very soon. Arsenal speed up, says Lance. So, so we'll be back again. This is not the last stream of the day. So just keep on checking the page, YouTube, Facebook, whichever. Uh, we'll be back again very, very soon. Let's hope we have another um, update in the next few minutes or hour. I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching. Catch up with you soon.